Hunt with passion. Never stop casting. Chase the dream. Welcome to Season 3 of Musky Mastery Outdoors. Sponsored by Joe Booker Outdoors. Number one in big game fish products. All right, what's up guys? Welcome back to another, I don't know what we're gonna even call these segments. This is just advice from a musky guide. If you've been following me and my clients on Facebook or Instagram, you've been seeing that, and you know, I'm very fortunate that we've been having a great season so far. And I wanna share with you a little bit of the strategy that I've been implementing to catch these muskies. Uh, you've seen the lures and uh, you know, I wanna just go over today some basic things. It's raining outside and that kind of spurred this idea of the strategy side of things. That's really been important, especially in some of these big, the biggest fish we've caught this year. So first of all, I'll, I'll just start with this basic premise, okay? And this is something that everybody knows about, but let's put it on the table, okay? What spurs musky activity? A lot of clients ask me, when we're out there fishing, well, how often do muskies eat? And you know, we don't have a great answer for all of those things. But I can tell you this, right? Environmental change triggers musky activity. And one of the ways that I use environmental change to help boat muskies over the course of a season is to be on certain spots when those environmental changes take place. So we're not even talking about the moon yet. The moon is a whole nother topic that we'll kind of throw in here as we talk about this today. And by the way, I'm gonna show you some of the rods and some of the lures that I'm using too. Uh, so you can, you'll can you get all different types of tips and ideas here in this little vlog segment. But what I'm talking about with environmental change, we've got this storm right now um, and family, family's up here at the cabin. So we're not really doing much fishing, at least in the morning today. We did our coffee and breakfast and that was great. So now it's a great time for me to do this, this vlog. So how are we using environmental change? For example, let's say we start off on a sunny day, bluebird skies. There's really nothing changing. We've got a steady wind. It could be a north, south, east, or west. Let's just say it's a southwest wind. And one of my clients raises a muskie on the 500 grape flame. This, this lure, by the way, you've seen this. I'm throwing this on St. Croix's eight foot six, medium heavy, legend tourney, fast action. This is the grape flame and uh, 500 booger tail. Let's say a client raises a muskie on grape flame, which uh, has is, is, is been so hot right now. I will go and try throwing some cast backs initially at that fish, right? So again, the, the situation here is blue skies, really lack of environmental change, raised a nice muskie on the eight. She comes up, a lot of times these fish right now are coming up on the side imaging on my hummingbirds. We're not even seeing all these fish. So the, so the muskie comes in and depending on its activity level, I'm gonna, I'm gonna really try two different things right away. One, and if I've got two clients throwing, these are the two lures that generally go out. First lure out is the JB Rattler. And again, I'm throwing this on St. Croix's Mojo Muskie. This is their 610 medium fast. This is just a killer rod if you're gonna be working jerk baits or you're throwing these little cast back lures like the JB Rattler here. This is one of the first lures out at a muskie that followed. A lot of times they'll just hit this right out of the gate on a following fish, one of our best little tactics. If the muskie's really aggressive, which you know, you just you just don't know sometimes, the second lure out is gonna be a double eight hooker tail tinsel here. Here's old Goldilocks double eight. See this thing's seen better days, been pretty beat up here. This, these are the two lures, and by the way, this is uh, Legend Tournament 8.6 Heavy Power. Love the heavy power for the double eights. Really get that, that uh, you know, power and movement into the figure eight. So right away, again, raise a muskie on the 500. Here's the two lures I'm going after this fish, JB Rattler and 800. And what I've been seeing a lot of times this season, unfortunately, a lot of times the castbacks don't work. Right, you, you know, it's a, you say, oh, Chaz, you and Joe always talk the castbacks. You're catching all these fish. Well, hey, it works sometimes, and when it does, that's fantastic. But it doesn't work all the time. So now we're going to go back to environmental change. We raise this muskie. Let's say it's, you know, at, at 10 a.m. Okay. Well, we're fishing. We're fishing. We're fishing. Maybe we catch a fish. Maybe we don't. We're we're covering good water. We're we're trying to stay diverse with rocks, weeds, rocks, weeds. Always trying to, um, you know, current rocks, weeds, current. We're we're always diversifying our portfolio of spots. But the moment, I mean, literally, I get that sense, and this is kind of that, that internal hunting or fishing sense. You're not gonna get this off the phone. You're not gonna get this off an app. You just gotta feel it. When you kind of look at the sky 
and you sense there is an environmental change taking place. What does this look like? Wind change, light change, rain, cloud cover. You, you just start to sense the humidity start to pop. This has nothing to do with the moon. You just see it, you feel it. If you can, you need, and, and by the way, there's a little strategy with, within, with regard to where I'm fishing. Again, let's say we raise that, that nice muskie on the 500 at 10 a.m. And this could be like, let's say 2 p.m. on our full day guide trip. I start to see that environmental change taking place. Bam, we are moving. Everybody rods up, we're going, we're hauling right to that spot where the muskie uh, followed initially. There's no moon phase going on, let's just say, this is just all environmental and we're gonna go right back on that fish. What lure are we throwing at that muskie? Same one she followed in, 500 grape flame. This is gonna be out, uh, another lure, and let me just uh, sneak back here in my, what was supposed to be, um, let's see how easy this is gonna go on video. Uh, well, I've got a bunch of lures down here and we'll see if they wanna come out. Oh. Here's another one, guys. I'm glad that wasn't too bad. I've got some PVC piping in there with all my lures there. <sighs> Baby depth raider. Here I got the jointed Cracker Jack Tiger. So we're going back on that fish at 2 p.m. I'm gonna be throwing a combination of lures. It's going something like this. Small lures, I mean, that's obviously one of the trends that you're seeing in my boat. Small lures, and we're going back though, you know, maybe I'm throwing the top raider, whatever it is, but we're going back on the change. Right when you sense it, you've got to go back. Because what I'm finding here, guys, is this. On these one musky days or two musky days, you know, these, these moments you have to catch a fish are very small. They're very small. And if you don't take advantage of this moment, it's the difference between boating a musky and not boating a musky on a guide trip. You've got to go back on that fish right when you sense that something is changing. If you don't do it, you could be done. These, these environmental changes that I'm talking about are sometimes 15, 20 minutes. That's it. 20 minutes. And making the right decision is pass or fail on your musky guide trip. If you, if you go back to that fish, you're at least you're putting yourself in position to score. And a lot of these muskies that you've been seeing that I've been posting on Facebook and Instagram have all taken place because of a, of a move back to a fish that I marked under a change. And as I'm guided, I'm on the water every day, sometimes this is not even a muskie that we raised that day. For example, uh, let's say, uh, you know, it, it's, let's say yesterday, Sunday, I was out guiding some guys and we raised a number of different fish. I'm out on Monday, the next day. I tell my guide clients, hey guys, I've got like five or six or four or three muskies we raised the previous day and we're gonna go back on those fish now. So again, what I'm saying is, We've got the bluebird day to start. Once I have environmental change, I'm gonna go and hit all these muskies that I, I know, I have an idea about where they are hanging out. And that's really what has is, what is, uh, you know, helped me to be successful this season, is just making the move when the time is right. So I really can't stress that enough. We're not even talking about moon faces. We're just talking about taking advantage of local weather. And uh, I will say this, another, another tip for you as far as going back, this is very important. So. I would say uh, the second thing I'm gonna leave you with today on this, this short vlog, and you know I'm a talker, I'm trying to look at the camera, we're at nine, we're nine minutes in, so it's, it's, we're actually doing pretty well. It's not 30 minutes like some of my other videos. Uh, one of the other things that's really important to think about, guys, is location. So a lot of times on these birds, when we're fishing reefs, a lot of you guys see in my videos, I look like I'm far away from shore. Well, I love fishing reefs, that's no secret hit a waypoint on that fish. Could be when I'm trolling and I see them on side imaging. Here we go. Uh, my girlfriend's laughing in the background here. She thought my, my sound effect was funny, but it's actually pretty similar to what it sounds like. Anyway, what I'm getting at here is this. I hit that waypoint on that fish at 10 a.m. and now we're going back at 2 p.m. with the environmental change. One thing you've got to remember is that these fish move. They are not always, and very often, they are not always in the same spot that you leave them in. This is very important because if you go back to that spot and you think that fish is going to be right where you left her and you take 10 casts with your buddy or your wife or your girlfriend or whoever you're fishing with and you don't raise that fish and you say, yep, darn it, she's not here, I'll tell you this, you're, you're missing the opportunity. You have to inspect that area in full you know, just completion. You have to look at everything. That fish, these, these big muskies on these reef systems or whatever you're fishing, 
they move around. They're not stagnant. They are not going to be sitting right where you left them. And you can often leave muskies, hungry muskies behind if you're not uh, careful with, with doing a, a, a full search of that area. I'm talking about move up 50 yards, move south 50 yards. Go in shallow, go in deep. Really explore that spot. Change your casting angles. If that fish came in, you know, uh, you know, with the lure coming in this way, go around the spot if you can and throw the lure the opposite way. You have to try a variety of different things. And then even, you know, if, if, you, if you raised her on a cast, try a trolling pass. But you have to be, you have to keep your mind open to exploring a wide variety of options. So what I'm saying is, again, when you're using this environmental change and going back and fish, sometimes it's very easy. Sometimes you just go back there and pow, she's right there. Sometimes you have to do a little digging and work. But that's the main uh, kind of topic that I want to talk about today. And um, again, that's, that's probably one of the biggest things that I focus on. The moon, I'll, and I'll, I'll give you a topic three here as far as what's, what's working this season. I got to be honest, this, this year, it's, it's been very sporadic in the sense that we have caught muskies on the moon. And what I mean by on the moon is close to or around a moon phase. Moon rise and moon set. You got moon overhead and moon underfoot, which are your major periods, your minors and majors. We've caught muskies on the moon phases, and all that means, guys, go on the Musky 360 app, check out the moon phases. Like, for example, today we've got a 2.42 p.m. moon rise. It's a minor period. What am I going to do with that information? I said, well, I don't know. I said, a lot of guys, a lot of folks I see at these expos and things, Chaz, I never, I never caught a fish on the moon. I don't, it doesn't work. Dude, well, here's what's wrong <laughs> a lot of times. You're just probably not fishing a great spot on a moon phase. How do you, how does that work? Well, again, when I've got this 2.42 p.m. time today that we're gonna focus on, I am gonna put my girlfriend or my brother or whoever I'm fishing with today, I'm gonna put them on not, either, either it's gonna be two options. I'm either gonna put them on a spot where I know we raised a fish within the last two days and I have a good idea that she's probably there, the muskie, or two. Well, at 2.42 p.m., where are we gonna be fishing? We're gonna be fishing a spot that historically produces fish under whatever said conditions we've got. Now, what do you mean by historically? I'm saying over the past two decades, this musky spot produces fish. This is not a spot that's like, yeah, we caught one there back in 1995 with Uncle Bill. That is not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about a spot that consistently produces year in, year out, May, June, July, August, September, October, November. Seven months a year. That's the spot. I know. I'm getting the I'm getting the look here from my girlfriend. I'm talking too much, but I get intense about this stuff. So that's my take on the moon. Be on a historical producing spot or be on a fish where you know where that you know where that muskie is and attack. And if she follows and doesn't strike, and a lot of times again, seeing almost most of my follows these days on side imaging. I'll probably have to do a video about that. If she follows, even on the moon face, don't get bummed. Environment, I'm, po I'm pointing outside of the garage here. Environmental change. Go back on that fish when you have a change. Some of these changes, by the way, again, as we wrap this whole thing up today, are subtle. This can be a very light, uh, you know, light change. It can be a light, light change where it's, it's very minimal. And the other thing is, if you go on an environmental change and you strike out and you don't see the fish, hey, Go back again on another change. It doesn't mean you just try this once. You have to be persistent. That's one of the, that's why we call this hunting. This really is hunting. It's not just musky. This is not fishing. This is hunting. You're going, you have to be persistent. You have to keep trying because I know that fish is there and I have to just wait and, and just try to keep getting that fish at a moment when she's vulnerable. And that can happen with these environmental changes. The moon is your back pocket ace, but environmental change allows us to score day in and day out. Okay, so there you have it, guys. Uh, please write it in the comments. Um, a little late, this is the video for last week, but we've been just so crazy busy guiding that I couldn't get a video out. And it's raining right now, and I figured you guys would appreciate a video. This is a live update, advice from a musky guide here for the 2020 season. So. Thank you again to all of our Musky Mastery subscribers, my sponsors, Joe Booker Outdoors, St. Croix Rods. I love you guys. You guys keep me outfitted with the best product, my customers with the best product. Um, all right, that's all I got. Over and out. As always, guys, thanks for watching.